Okay, everybody. Um, so today we will talk about the circulation. Circulation of blood. You already know that blood circulates inside the cardiovascular system. That means inside the heart and the blood vessels. First, uh, we will talk about different types of circulation. Then we will talk about the arterial and the venous system. That means the arteries and veins of your body. So, we will try to identify the major arteries and the major veins in the body. Then we will talk about a structure formed by few arteries. That structure is called or named circle of Willis, which is formed by few arteries where at the bottom of your vein and that circle of willis or the arterial structure is very important. Why? Because your brain mostly gets blood from that circle of willis which is sitting in the bottom of the brain. So we will see how that circle of willis is formed. Which arteries form this structure? Then we will talk about the hepatic portal circulation, one type of circulation present in the body. So, first we will see <coughs> the types of circulation. First, uh, we divide the circulation into two types. I believe in last lecture I mentioned this too. Adult circulation present in the adult human body and fetal circulation which is only present in the fetus when the baby is in mother's uterus inside the mother's body, the circulation between the fetus and the mother, that is the fetal circulation. Adult circulation is divided into three, systemic, you know that systemic circulation is the circulation between the heart and the whole body, pulmonary. Circulation is the circulation between the heart and two lungs. And then portal circulation, which is also called hepatic portal circulation, which is the circulation between your GI tract, gastrointestinal tract and the liver. So between the GI tract and the liver. First, we will see the differences between the systemic and pulmonary circulation. How they are different? Systemic circulation and pulmonary circulation. Okay. So, you already know systemic circulation is the circulation of blood between the heart and the whole body. Okay. Pulmonary is between the heart and two lungs. Okay. 
in case of systemic circulation artery is carry oxygenated blood or oxygen rich blood veins carry deoxygenated or carbon dioxide rich blood that's the normal we know that artery is carry oxygenated veins carry deoxygenated that's the system in case of pulmonary it is just opposite that means what artery is carry deoxygenated and veins carry oxygenated blood number 3 systemic circulation is a long circuit circulation because you know that heart and the whole body so you can say systemic is a long circuit circulation because it goes to the whole body pulmonary is short circuit or distance circulation because heart and two lungs and you know that two lungs are just beside the heart so between the heart and lungs short distance or short circuit systemic circulation is a high pressure system in case of pulmonary it is low pressure makes sense because systemic needs to take blood far away from the heart the pressure must be high right to send the blood from your heart to the brain to the leg to send further you need more pressure so systemic in systemic circulation the blood pressure is higher in pulmonary circulation the pressure of blood is low because heart just sends blood to the lungs and lungs are not too far just beside the heart so the pressure is low low pressure system or circuit so those are few differences between systemic and pulmonary circulation so if i ask you you must be able to answer okay <coughs> systemic circulation sends blood to the body whole body to give or deliver oxygen to the tissue of your whole body because all living tissue need oxygen so systemic circulation sends blood to the body to provide oxygen right we all know that pulmonary circulation sends blood to the lungs to get oxygen right because we inhale the air or oxygen into the lung and blood goes there to get the oxygen so pulmonary blood goes to the lung to get the oxygen systemic blood goes to the body to give the oxygen so just opposite <clears throat> now blood vessels blood vessels of your body include the arteries veins and capillaries those are three types of blood vessels now first just know that arteries and veins are only to transport the blood take the blood from one place to another arteries and veins okay capillaries are to exchange the chemicals between the blood and the tissue so capillaries are to exchange the blood through the capillary wall exchange of chemicals not blood exchange of chemicals take place what are the chemicals pass through the capillary wall in the lung you know that gases oxygen carbon dioxide because blood goes to the lung to get the oxygen 
So from the alveoli of the lung, blood gets oxygen and blood gives oxygen and carbon dioxide to the alveoli of the lung. So in the lung, oxygen and carbon dioxide exchange occurs through the wall of the capillary in your lung. In the tissue, through the capillary wall, what happens? Nutrients and oxygen go to the tissue because tissue needs both the oxygen and the nutrients. And from the tissue, blood gets the toxic chemicals, including the carbon dioxide from the tissue to the blood. So through the capillary wall, all those chemicals are exchanged, gases, nutrients, as well as the metabolic waste, right? So those are the chemicals um, are exchanged through the capillary wall. But arteries and veins are to transport the blood, take the blood from one place to another. Now, the question is, both arteries and veins transport the blood, but they transport the blood in opposite direction always. Arteries take the blood away from the heart, right? And veins bring the blood towards the heart. So that is one important difference. And this is the definition of the artery and vein. Artery takes the blood away from the heart and veins bring the blood towards the heart. We don't care what type of blood. Because you know, in systemic circulation, arteries carry oxygenated blood. In pulmonary, arteries carry deoxygenated, right? So, it doesn't matter what type of blood is carried. The definition is, the blood vessel that takes the blood away from the heart, that is the artery. The blood vessel brings the blood towards the heart, it's vein. It could be oxygenated or deoxygenated, doesn't matter. Okay, uh, now since the arteries take the blood away from the heart, the fact is that large arteries give the blood to the smaller artery. Make sense? Because from the heart, large artery in our aorta takes the blood out, right? And giving to the smaller arteries. So artery always gives blood to the smaller artery. Hence, since bringing blood towards the heart, what happens? Smaller veins give blood to the bigger veins or larger veins. Make sense? As go, uh, the veins go closer to the heart, gets bigger, bigger, bigger. So smaller veins give the blood to the larger veins. Larger arteries give the blood to the smaller arteries. So opposite. <coughs> arteries. Uh, there are three types of arteries in the arterial system. Largest arteries are called the conducting or elastic arteries. Example, aorta. In aorta is the largest artery and its large branches. <coughs> uh, why these arteries, largest arteries, are called elastic arteries because they can expand if the blood pressure is high these arteries can expand because in the wall you have elastic fibers elastic tissue in the wall of the conducting arteries and because of the presence of elastic tissue these arteries can expand or get wider, bigger. <coughs> uh, the advantage of having elasticity in the wall is, just look at me, when your heart pumps the blood, right, ventricle contacts, blood suddenly enters into aorta, right, or pulmonary trunk, those are big arteries, right, and those arteries expand to receive the blood. If they don't expand, if elasticity is not present, then what will happen? Some blood will come back, will not get enough space to enter into the artery, right? But 
since these arteries can expand when ventricle contracts, a lot of blood can enter into it. Make sense? So, to accommodate more blood, they expand. And how they can expand? Because they have elastic tissue in the wall. <coughs> Muscular or distributing arteries. These are medium sized arteries. They receive blood from the conducting arteries and give to the organs of the body. For example, you know this is the aorta and we know that from the aorta you have seen in the lab part renal artery goes to the kidneys. Right? You remember renal artery, splenic artery goes to the spleen. So, aorta is the largest conducting or elastic artery, but these are distributing or muscular arteries, getting the blood from the conducting arteries and giving to the organs. So, distributing or muscular arteries. And the smallest arteries are called arterioles. For example, after the renal artery enters into the kidney, divides into many branches and eventually form very small branches. So, these are the arterioles. Okay? So, arterioles are the smallest arteries. And then from the arterioles, what happens? The capillaries start. So, from the end of the arteriole, capillary system starts because that is the smallest artery, arteriole. So, from the end of that, capillary starts. <coughs> if you see uh, the wall of those three types of arteries, you see here in this picture, um, in the wall of elastic or conducting arteries, you have lot of elastic tissue. If, if you see here, a muscular tissue of course, smooth muscle is present there, but you see the blue bar is showing the elastic tissue. So, lot of elastic tissue is present there too, not only the smooth muscle. If you see muscular or distributing artery in the wall, you have more muscle tissue, smooth muscle, that is why I call muscular, because muscle tissue is more, elastic tissue is very small amount. The middle one, you see, the blue is smaller, but red is bigger. That means muscle tissue is more, elastic tissue is less. That's why it is called muscular. And arterial has a distributing arteries. If you see the wall of the veins, uh, veins are also divided into different types. What are the types of veins? Large veins, then smaller veins and venules. So, venules are the smallest veins. Arterioles are the smallest arteries, venules are the smallest veins. You know the largest vein of the body, uh, vena cava, superior to vena cava, those are very big, red saphenous vein, those are large veins of the body. <coughs> Smaller veins, uh, renal vein or you know pancreatic vein, those are smaller veins. Venules are the smallest veins. Most of the venules don't have name because venules are already inside the organ, right? So, like renal vein goes to the kidney and going inside uh, branches, smaller and smaller. We don't name all those small branches. Uh, so, those are the types of veins. Now, as you remember, I said that. Uh, 
Conducting arteries, then muscular or distributing arteries. Then from there, what happens? Smaller arteries, those are called the arterioles. So these are the arterioles. So conducting artery or elastic artery, muscular or distributing artery, and then arterioles. And from the end of the arterioles, you must remember, I mentioned a few minutes ago, the capillaries are formed. So, these are the capillaries, okay. And capillaries do what? Form network. They get connected to each other and form network and that is called the capillary bed. So, these are the capillary beds. And then, in the other side of the capillary or capillary bed, the venous system starts. So, these are the venules, okay, smallest veins and they drain blood to the small veins and then from the small veins, the blood goes to the larger veins, okay. So, these are the venules. smaller vein, right, and then larger veins. So, you see, between the arterial system and the venous system, you have the capillary bed or capillaries. So, capillary system is in between the arterial and the venous. And I mentioned already that arteries take the blood away from the heart. That means larger arteries give blood to the smaller and the smaller gives blood to the smallest. And then blood enters into the capillary system where a change of chemicals take place. Gases, nutrients, right? Metabolic waste. Those are exchanged through the wall of the capillaries and then blood enters into the venous system, right? So the smallest veins are the venules receive the blood from the capillaries and give to the smaller veins and then to the larger vein goes to the heart. So that's the circulation. <coughs> um, the wall of the capillary, if you see the wall of the capillary, it is extremely thin and that is very helpful because you know that lot of chemicals are exchanged through the wall of the capillary, right? Chemicals are exchanged through the wall of the capillary. Must be able to pass quickly and easily. So, the thin wall of the capillary is very helpful for the chemicals to pass through. And if you see the wall of a capillary, it is formed by a single layer of squamous cells. That means simple squamous. You know squamous are the flat cells, squamous epithelial. So, a single layer of squamous, flat cells like this form the capillary wall. And we know epithelial cells rest on the basement membrane. So, that is the capillary wall. So, the chemicals can easily pass through it. <coughs> here you see the same thing that I showed you here um, from the heart, elastic arteries are conducting, then muscular are distributing, then the arterioles, then the capillary bed, then to the venous system. Uh, differences between the arteries and the veins in your body. Just I will mention few differences. If you see an artery, this is an artery and a vein. So like this. So this is a vein, this is an artery. If you see the wall of an artery, it is very thick. 
compared to the wall of a bed. So arterial wall is much thicker than the wall of the bed. Number one. Number two, since the arterial wall is thick, the size of the lumen is smaller. Smaller lumen. Since the wall of a vein is thin, the size of the lumen is larger. Okay. Since the arterial wall is thick, the lumen always remains open because thick wall. So, it will not get flat. Always round and open. So, always round open since the wall is thick since the wall of a vein is narrow it easily gets flattened and narrow so narrow uh, sorry not narrow i said flat flattened because the wall is thin when the vein is empty or pressure is low, it will get flat. It is not round. But even artery does not have blood, the lumen will remain open and round. Uh, measure arteries and veins in the body. So, in next few slides, what we will do, first we will see the main arteries of the body, we will try to identify them and then we will see the main veins of the body, we will see their locations in the body. First, uh, this picture is showing the arterial system, that means the arteries of your body. But remember one thing, it is extremely difficult, actually impossible to show all the arteries of your body. So here only the large arteries you can see. <coughs> and you need to know uh, at least the larger arteries. So first, this is a systemic circulation. That means between the heart and the whole body. Okay? So, you see from the heart, the artery that takes the blood out is the aorta. And we know that in systemic circulation, oxygenated blood goes to the body, right? So, from the left side, you must remember I mentioned that left side contains oxygen, oxygenated blood. So, this is left ventricle, from the left ventricle, aorta takes the blood out. Now, the aorta has three parts, ascending part, aortic arch and descending part. Okay? So, this is ascending aorta, aortic arch and descending aorta. Descending aorta is the longest part. It goes all the way down to the abdomen. Now, ascending aorta gives two very important branches. So, from the ascending aorta, two important arteries arise and they go to the wall of the heart. Those are the right and left coronary arteries. So, right and left, right coronary artery, left coronary artery. These two arteries, you know, go to the wall of the heart. Arise from the ascending aorta, first part of the aorta. Then, you already know that <coughs> from the aortic arch, three arteries arise. You have seen that in the lab. In the heart model, three arteries from the aortic arch. From right to left, tracheocephalic trunk, 
left common carotid and left subclavian. So those are the three branches of the aortic arch. Now, uh, left common carotid and left subclavian, right? You've got two left, left common carotid, left subclavian. They will go to the left side, left half of the body. Where are the right common carotid, right subclavian? Those are the branches of brachiocephalic trunk. So what happens, you see, brachiocephalic trunk divides into two. What? Right subclavian, subclavian and right common carotid. Now you see it makes sense. You got left subclavian, left common carotid directly from the aortic arch and right common carotid, right subclavian. They are not coming directly from the aortic arch but they are the branches of the brachiocephalic trunk. Make sense? So now you got right subclavian, left subclavian, right common carotid, left common carotid. Make sense? Does it make sense everybody? So, you got right common carotid, left common carotid, right subclavian, left subclavian. Now it makes sense. Okay. Now, uh, subclavian, its name is telling you it will go where? Under the, under what? Subclavian, under the uh, which bone is this? Clavicle. That's why it is called subclavian, right? Sub means under. So, subclavian will run under the clavicle, right? And go to the arm. Make sense? This way. And remember, carotid, common carotid will go towards the brain, head towards the head part of the body. So, subclavian under the clavicle will go to the arm and common carotid will go straight up towards the head. Is it clear? Okay. <coughs> when you will hear the term common, that means it will divide into two, external and internal, usual. So, now let us see. You see, this is left common carotid, so it will divide into two external and internal carotid. This is right common carotid, so it is also, it divides into two. So you see, both right and left common carotid, since they are common, they will divide into two, external carotid and internal carotid. So, this is external carotid, this is internal carotid left external carotid, left internal because coming from left common carotid. This is right external carotid, right common carotid, right? So you see, we got two common right and left common carotids will divide it to two, external and internal. Now, we got external carotid, right and left, internal carotid, right and left. Make sense? Because common will divide into external and internal. Remember, this is important. Internal carotid will go to the internal part of the head, which is what? In the inner part of the head, you have the most important organ. What is that? The brain, right? So, internal carotid, right and left, will go to the brain and will deliver blood to the brain internal part of the head. Make sense? External will go to the outer part of the head. That means what? Skin, muscles, skull, bones. Make sense? So those external structures will get mostly blood from the external carotid and your brain which is the internal organ of the head will get mostly blood from the internal carotid. Make sense? Okay. Now, let's talk about the subclavian. You remember subclavian goes 
under the clavicle and subclavian artery has three branches. So three arteries arise from subclavian. See, this is the subclavian. Three arteries arise from here, like this. Three. Before it goes to the axillary area, armpit. What are those three arteries arise from subclavian? One is called vertebral artery. Let's go to larger here. You see this picture. It is showing one subclavian, one side. So you see the subclavian of that side. Uh, you see three branches. One is called the vertebral artery. See uh, second from left top, uh, vertebral that arises from subclavian, then thyro cervical trunk and costo cervical trunk. Here you see three. One, two, three. This one is the vertebral. Goes towards the brain. And this is costo uh, thyro cervical and costo cervical. So those are three branches of subclavian. Three arteries arise from subclavian. Vertebral goes to the brain. Remember, this is important because it goes to the brain. So before, you remember just few minutes ago I told you, two arteries go to the brain. What are those? Anybody remember? Which carotid? External or internal? Internal, internal right? Two internal, I mentioned, go to the brain. And now we got another vertebral. So you have two vertebral because you have two subclavian right and left. So two vertebral also go to the brain. So remember two internal carotid and two vertebral. Those are the main arteries go to the brain to give blood to the brain. Okay. Now let us see other two thyro cervical and costo cervical. Thyro cervical will keep two branches. That is why it is called thyro cervical. It has two parts in its name thyro and cervical. One branch will go to the thyroid gland. You know you have thyroid gland here, right? So from there, one branch from thyro cervical will go to the thyroid gland, and another will go to the cervical part. That means the neck. You know, cervical part is the neck part of the body. So, we will go to the neck, one branch, another branch to the thyroid gland. That is why it is called thyro cervical trunk. Costo cervical trunk. It also has two parts in its name. Costo and cervical. Costo means ribs, costal, you know, ribs. So, one branch will go down towards the ribs, another will go to the cervical, neck part. So, branch like this, one will go down towards the ribs and another will go to the neck. That is why it is called costo cervical trunk. Then just uh, know that why sometimes you see the name of an artery is trunk, like pulmonary trunk, remember? Here you've got two trunks, costo cervical, thyro cervical. Those are arteries, right? But why we say trunk? You can see an artery which is very short and divides immediately after it is formed. So short artery that divides immediately after it is formed, that is a trunk. Uh, here you see those are very short, costo cervical, thyro cervical, then they divide. That is why those are trunk. But vertebral is a long artery. Anyway, so those are three branches of subclavian. Then what happens? Subclavian goes towards the arm. 
let's go back to previous picture here subclavian goes to the armpit here first under the clavicle right goes then goes to the armpit and this area is called the axillary area you know right from np1 so its name becomes axillary artery then you know this is brachial part of the body arm so it becomes brachial artery makes sense and then goes to the fore arm and it divides into two those two branches are very easy radial and ulnar named after the bones you have in the forearm right you have radius and ulna you know that in forearm those are the two bones right radius and ulna so the one towards the radial side that's the radial artery ulnar side ulnar artery you know radius is the lateral bone towards the thumb you need to remember that now you tell me subclavian goes under the clavicle right gives three branches vertebral posterior cervical thyroid cervical right makes sense and then goes under the armpit in the armpit area that is called what axillary right then goes to the arm now it is called what brachial right and then goes to the forearm and divides into two what radial and Right? Brachial artery is often used to do what? Pressure the, measure the blood pressure, right? We take blood pressure usually from the brachial artery, right? From this part. Radial artery, why radial artery is important? Pulse, right? We take the pulse, measure the pulse from the radial artery. Why from radial, not ulnar? Anybody? because here not from radial artery here only here because under the radial artery here only in this part not above you have the bone radius directly under the artery okay here you have superficial fascia fat muscle then the bone right but here in this part immediately under the radial artery you have the radius bone so when you press the artery will not go down, right? Because you have the hard bone underneath. So you can easily get the pulse from there. Anyway, so radial and ulnar, those two arteries go to the palm and get connected like this. You see, radius, ulnar, they will divide like this and will get connected and will form two arches. One is in this side of the palm, another in the back okay, of the hand. So palm and hand. So, two arches are formed. Radial will divide into two, ulnar will divide into two and they will join to form two arches. Uh, palmar, superficial palmar arch and deep palmar arch. In this side, superficial and in the back, deep. Okay, the Superficial palmar arch and deep palmar arch. Two arches are formed in the palm. That's why they are called the palmar arches. We don't pronounce L, we say Palmer. You can say Palmer if you want, but Palmer is more appropriate. And then from those two arches, branches arise, arteries arise, and those are called the digital arteries. Go to the digits or fingers. That's why those are called digital arteries. So that's the upper limb, right? So you got the head part which arteries supply blood to the head, which arteries supply blood to the upper lips. Now, before I go to the descending aorta, I just want to quickly review. You help me. Okay? So, in systemic circulation, from which chamber blood enters into the aorta? Say loud, left ventricle, right? No problem if you are wrong. Okay, so try. So left ventricle, right? Pumps, so blood enters into the aorta, right? Aorta has how many parts? This part is called what? Descending. Then arch, right? And then descending. Which one is the longest? Descending, right? Is the longest. 
Okay, first two very important arteries arise from ascending aorta. They go to the wall of the heart. Those are called what? Coronary artery, right? Coronary, yeah. Coronary arteries. How many? Two. Two, right and left coronary arteries. Make sense? Then, aortic arch. How many arteries arise from the aortic arch? Three. Brachiocephalic tract. Left common carotid and left subclavian, right? So you got left common carotid and left subclavian. Where are the right common carotid and right subclavian? They come from this one, right? Brachiocephalic trunk. So brachiocephalic trunk divides into two. Right common carotid, right, right subclavian. Is it clear? Okay. So which one will go under the clavicle? Subclavian, right? And which one will go towards the head? Common carotid, right? Common carotid. So two. One is going towards the arm. Another is going towards the head, right? Subclavian is under the clavicle. And common carotid is going towards the head. Is it clear? Now common, I told you, if you hear common, it will divide into how many? Two. What are those? Internal and external, right? So both right common carotid and left common carotid will divide into internal and external. Is it clear? Which one will go to the inner part of the head? Internal or external? Internal is the question, right? That means what? To the brain. Which one will supply blood to the outer part of the head? External. What are the structures in the outer part of the head? You know that, right? Skin, scalp, right? Um, bones, muscles, those are the outer part, right? So, you got now, uh, subclavian. Subclavian, before it enters into the armpit area, how many branches arise? Three. One is long artery that goes to the brain. That is what? Vertebral, right? So you got two vertebral from two subclavian, right? And two trunks, thyrocervical and what? Costocervical. Is it clear? Okay. Then subclavian goes to the armpit. Now its name is what? Armpit. Axillary, right? Then to the arm called brachial. You know this is the brachial part of the body. And then divides into two. In the forearm, radial, laterally, thumb side and ulnar medial. Make sense? And then both radial and ulnar divide into how many? Two, right? And form two arches like this. Superficial palmar arch and what? Deep palmar arch. Two palmar arches in the palm. Right? And from there, the arteries arise to go to digits. Right? Digital arteries. Go to the fingers. Is it clear? Okay. Now, let's see the descending aorta, the longest part of the aorta. Right? Descending aorta is divided into two parts. This is the diaphragm. You know, diaphragm is the muscle that separates thoracic and abdominal cavities. You already know that. So, this is the diaphragm. And you see, descending aorta pierces through the diaphragm, passes through the diaphragm. Okay? The part above the diaphragm, this part is called thoracic thoracic aorta. Some people said thoracic. Uh, thoracic is more appropriate. So thoracic aorta and the part below the diaphragm, this part is in the abdominal cavity, that's why it is called the abdominal. Aorta. Okay, so very simple. Descending aorta is very long and it is divided into two pi. The diaphragm above the diaphragm, that part is the thoracic aorta in the thoracic cavity, and below the diaphragm, abdominal aorta. Now we'll see the important branches from those two parts of descending aorta. Okay. First, 
from the descending aorta, uh, the important branches, those are arise, are inter intercostal arteries. Inter means in between, costal means rib. So intercostal arteries arise and you see here, it is very simple. So descending out, uh, sorry, thoracic aorta is in the thoracic part. So from thoracic aorta, intercostal arteries arise and go in between the ribs like this. Okay. So that's why they are called intercostal. So this is the thoracic aorta here, very large artery. And from there, intercostal arteries arise to go to the space in between the ribs. So those are important branches. And then another one, <coughs> phrenic arteries. These are called superior phrenic. Why? You must remember one thing. Diaphragm refers, phrenic refers diaphragm. So if you hear phrenic nerve, phrenic artery, phrenic vein, that means those arteries, veins, nerves are going to the diaphragm. Okay. So if you listen the term phrenic, that is diaphragm. So superior, superior means above, phrenic arteries. So these are superior phrenic arteries because going to the diaphragm from above. Makes sense coming from above, superior phrenic arteries to the diaphragm. <coughs> okay. Now, abdominal aorta. From the upper part of abdominal aorta, you see here, this is also easy. Inferior phrenic arteries arise and go to the diaphragm. So from above, superior phrenic, from below, inferior phrenic. So, these are inferior phrenic arteries. Phrenic arteries okay. from the abdominal aorta. Then you have two types of arteries arise from the abdominal aorta. Some are paired arteries like from both sides and some are single, mostly from the front. So if this is the abdominal aorta, some arteries arise from both sides, those are paired and some <coughs> arise from the front, single arteries. Okay? Paired arteries, first let us talk about the paired arteries. You already know, you have two kidneys, so kidneys this is blood from the renal arteries. So these are paired arteries because two kidneys, two renal arteries, right? Go to the kidneys. You have adrenal gland on the kidney. You know that the gland on the kidney, adrenal. So you have suprarenal arteries because another name of adrenal gland is suprarenal gland. So you have two renal arteries, two suprarenal arteries. Then you have vertebral, uh, sorry, not vertebral, lumbar arteries. Let me see if they have listed it anywhere. Two lumbar arteries go to the <coughs> lumbar part of the body, that means back of the body. Here, let's see. You see here, uh, this is the abdominal aorta, so you can see better now in this picture. Uh, first, let us see the paired arteries. You see inferior phrenic too, so those are paired arteries going to the diaphragm, right? From very upper part of the abdominal aorta. Then you see two renal arteries going to the kidneys and two suprarenal arteries going to the suprarenal glands or adrenal glands sitting on the kidneys, right? So you see those. Then you see two lumbar 
lumbar arteries, those are paired arteries, but another paired artery is gonadal. Go to that testis in male or ovaries in female. So, gonadal arteries. So, those are the paired arteries. Inferior phrenic, renal, suprarenal, lumbar, gonadal. Now, few arteries, those are single and mostly come from the front of the abdominal aorta. If you start from the top, you see here in this picture, celiac trunk, white escort trunk, I mentioned before, very short artery and divides immediately after it is formed. So, celiac trunk is really very short and it divides into three. So, let's see, this is celiac trunk, celiac trunk, it divides into three, gastric, splenic, hepatic. So, let me write it down. Three branches of celiac trunk are gastric, goes to the stomach because we know that gastric refers to the stomach, splenic, goes to the spleen and hepatic goes to the liver, right? So, gastric, splenic, hepatic, those three arteries are the branches of celiac trunk. You can see in this picture. Then, if you go down, another artery, important artery, that is called superior mesenteric artery. Mesenteric refers to the intestine. So, superior mesenteric supplies blood to the upper part of the intestine which is mainly the small intestine and there is another one that is called the inferior mesenteric that supplies blood to the lower part of the intestine which is mainly the large intestine. Make sense? So, small intestine is above, large intestine is below. So, mesenteric supplies blood to the intestine, superior mesenteric mostly to the upper, uh, upper part, that means the small intestine, inferior mesenteric mostly to the lower part, that means the large intestine. There is some overlapping, but in general, we can say that, okay. So, two mesenteric supply blood to the intestine. Then, what happens? Lower end of Abdominal aorta divides into two. These two are called common iliac. So, this is one common iliac. This is the left common iliac and this is the right common iliac. So, lower end of the abdominal aorta divides into right and left common iliac arteries. Now, you must remember I mentioned few minutes ago, if you hear common, that means it will divide into what? Two, external and internal and external, right? So, these two common iliac, both will divide into external iliac and internal. So, this is seen here, external and internal. This one also internal and external. But here, one thing you need to know, external iliac branch is much bigger than the internal iliac. So, if you see the picture, you see the external iliac, internal iliac. External is very big. Why? Because it goes to the thigh, to the lower limb. Internal, you see here, Internal stays here in the pelvic area. So, here the common iliac divides into external which goes to the lower limb and goes to the lower limb like this and internal stays here to supply blood to the pelvic organs like urinary bladder or prostate or uterus. Those structures get blood from internal iliac stays here. External goes to the thigh. Okay, so that's why internal is small but external is very big. 
So here, let's see that. Now let's see what happens to external. You see here, external goes to the thigh and becomes femoral artery. Very simple because we know that this bone is what? In the thigh. Femur, right? This is the femoral part of the body. We also know that. So, the artery becomes femoral artery. From the femoral artery, uh, if you see this picture, you see from the upper part of femoral artery here. So first, uh, from the femoral, deep femoral artery of thigh arises and from deep artery of thigh, circumflex. Circumflex has two branches. Ascending and descending circumflex. So you see here, this is the deep artery of the thigh, and from that circumflex artery arises and it gives two branches ascending and descending. So that is the uh, deep artery of the thigh, okay, arises from the femoral becomes circumflex and ascending circumflex, descending branch of circumflex. Now why uh, this artery is called circumflex? Because the word circumflex means going around. You must remember in the heart you have seen circumflex artery, remember that like this? So here then that circumflex artery goes around the femur like this. That's why it is called circumflex. Then it divides into ascending and descending branch. You see their pictures are complex going like this. Anyway, so uh, when the femoral artery goes to the back of the knee, back of the knee, that area is called the popliteal area, you must remember. So the name becomes popliteal artery in the back of the knee. Then the popliteal artery divides into anterior tibial, posterior tibial. In the leg, you know that tibia is the main bone, right? So, the branch goes to the front of the tibia, that is the anterior tibial artery, the branch that goes to the back of the tibia, that's the posterior tibial artery. Here, you see, uh, this is nicely shown. You see the back of the knee, popliteal artery, so femoral becomes popliteal when it reaches to the back of the knee. Then it divides into anterior tibial and posterior tibial. Then from the upper part of posterior tibial, now you, if you look carefully, a branch arises that is called the fibular artery. Now you got both tibial and fibular. You remember in your forearm you got what? Radial and ulna, right? Because those are two bones here. In your leg, you also have two bones, right? Tibia and fibula. So, tibial, how many? Two. Anterior and posterior and fibular, one. Those are two bones in the leg. Okay? So, fibula arises from the posterior tibia. And then, if you see uh, one thing here, anterior tibial, you need to know this, when the anterior tibial goes to the front of the ankle, here, front of the ankle, it becomes uh, uh, dorsalis pedis artery, okay? So, anterior tibial goes to the front of the tibia and goes down to the front of the ankle and becomes dorsalis pedis artery, okay? Then dorsalis pedis, you see here, this is the anterior tibial, right? Goes down to the front of the ankle. This is the dorsalis pedis. Okay? And dorsalis pedis forms the arcuate artery in the leg, uh, in, the, in the foot. The upper surface or dorsal surface of the foot. This is arcuate artery, like an arch. And then from there, dorsal metatarsal arteries arise. Why these are called dorsal? Because uh, you know in your foot you have two surfaces. Upper surface is called dorsal and sole is called the plantar surface. From NP1 you must remember. Dorsal 
you know dorsiflexion remember that plantar flexion dorsiflexion this is dorsal surface this is plantar surface okay so since the arch is here in dorsal surface and from there the branches arise dorsal metatarsal arteries in that surface, upper surface now let's go to the back you see here um, the fibular artery goes down to the lateral side of the foot and the posterior tibial goes to the medial side of the foot okay and the posterior tibial uh, forms two branches lateral and medial plantar branches why those are called plantar because sole of the foot is called the plantar surface so that's why since these two are in the sole of the foot lateral and medial plantar arteries and they join to form the plantar arch so you've got arcuate artery in the dorsal surface and plantar arch in the plantar surface that means sole of the foot is the plantar surface <coughs> so those are the branches uh, go to the foot okay so let's uh, stop here in next lecture we'll go over the venous system that means the important veins of your body now briefly i will tell you what i talked about today first just follow uh, correct me if i am wrong so from the left ventricle we are talking about systemic circulation right so oxygenated blood goes to the body so from the left ventricle blood enters into the aorta right which part of aorta ascending right this is the blood from left ventricle aorta has how many parts ascending then what arch then which one is the longest part descending okay now let's go back to ascending ascending aorta gives two very important branches go to the wall of the heart those are called coronary right and left coronary artery right then arch has how many three brachiocephalic trunk left common carotid left subclavian right so you got left common carotid left subclavian so brachiocephalic trunk gives what right common carotid right subclavian two branches right now you got left and right subclavian as well as common carotid makes sense common carotid goes towards the head and subclavian goes towards the arm is it clear subclavian under the clavicle now common carotid you got two right and left will divide into what external carotid and internal right internal supplies blood to the inner part of the head external to the outer part of the head makes sense so two internal carotid go to the brain and external to the outer structures of the head is it clear okay now subclavian subclavian gives how many branches three the long artery goes to the brain vertebral okay vertebral and other two are trunks right because those are short thyroid cervical and posto cervical both of them give how many branches two right thyro cervical posto cervical right thyro cervical two branches one goes to the thyroid gland that's why thyro cervical neck posto cervical how many branches two right costo means what ribs right so one will go down to the ribs another to the cervical posto cervical now <laughs> subclavian goes to the armpit right now it is called what axillary very good then goes to the arm uh, brachial then divides into two in the forearm lateral radial medial ulnar is it okay then divides into two in the palm and form how many arches two arches right superficial palmar arch deep palmar arches from there you got the digital artery right for the fingers okay now descending aorta the longest part right it is divided by what diaphragm above the diaphragm thoracic aorta right below the diaphragm abdominal aorta makes sense now thoracic aorta 
these branches, those go to the intercostal spaces here. So those are called what? Intercostal arteries. Make sense? And two go to the diaphragm. Those are called phrenic, right? Superior phrenic from above. Phrenic means what? Diaphragm. Phrenic refers the diaphragm. Okay. Now the descending aorta pierces through the diaphragm, right? And becomes what? Abdominal aorta. Make sense? In abdominal aorta, how many types of arteries you have? From abdominal two, right? Paired and non-paired or unpaired, right? So what are the paired arteries? Name me. Inferior phrenic, right? Two inferior phrenic, then renal, you are right. What else? Lumbar, suprarenal, right? That means adrenal gland and gonadal. Gonads are two, right? Testes, kidneys, uh, ovaries. So those must be paired, right? Make sense? Single arteries are what? From above. Celiac trunk. Why that is important? Because three important arteries arise from that trunk. What are those? Splenic and hepatic, right? Gastric for the stomach, splenic for the spleen, hepatic for the liver. Make sense? Then superior and inferior mesenteric, right? They supply blood to which organ? Intestine, right? So which one in this, uh, to the small intestine? The upper one, superior mesenteric. Inferior, <laughs> mostly to the Large intestine. Is it clear? Okay. Now lower end of the abdominal aorta divides into two, right? Common, iliac. Now common, right? So they will divide into what? External and internal. Which one is bigger? Because it goes to the leg, right? Thigh. And internal is smaller and it stays where? Pelvic area and supplies blood to the pelvic organ. Is it clear? Okay. Then the one goes to the thigh. That is the femoral, popliteal, right? Anterior tibial, posterior tibial, then fibular, and then form the arcuate artery or plantar arch. Okay? So that's the idea. Okay? So let's stop here.